Believe it or not, fall is already here and that means it's time for another everyday carry update. This is my favorite series on the channel and my favorite season of the year. So without any further ado, let's dive into the video. Starting off with a new knife I've been checking out, the Civivi Cadis. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know I'm a huge fan of Civivi. I think they're just killing it in the budget blade market, you know, quality versus price. Uh, the Cadis is a new release from them. This is a substantial knife. It's eight inches in total length. You know, I'm usually around seven or seven and a half with most of my blades. And I just came off of the mini Praxis before this. So this was just a pretty substantially large upgrade and change for me. Going over some of the specs, it's a three and a half inch spear point blade compared to my usual drop point. It's a 14C 28N steel with a black stone wash finish. I don't think I've had a knife with the steel before. It is really solid. I've been perfectly happy with it, especially considering uh, this thing is under 60 bucks, I think. It uses what they call green burlap micarta scales. Uh, it's really more of a brownish type of color, but that tends to be the case with a lot of green micarta and that brown sort of tan color range. Compared to my other micarta scales, this is a lot smoother of a finish. I don't know if that's why they call it burlap micarta. You know, it could be, um, to be honest, it gives it a little bit of a cheap feel compared to other micarta scales and other Civivi blades I've tried. It is nice though, and I do think it looks nice. It's not a huge deal, but I just really like that grippiness of regular micarta, and this is just really smoothed out in comparison. Other than that though, I have been really happy with this, and it's kind of been nice having a little bit of a bigger blade compared to what I'm used to. Moving on from there, I've got a new wallet I've been checking out. This is the Pioneer Molecule card holder. If you catch all my videos, you probably saw I talked about their global pouch a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is going to be very similar because it uses the same exact type of fabric, which is a huge plus in my eyes. Pioneer offers three different fabrics with a handful of different colors. I got the slate color, which comes in the 3XD fabric. It's a soft touch, kind of matte finish, three ply nylon. It has DWR coating as well, so it's not going to absorb any sweat or oils or water if you have it out in the elements. Uh, super simple wallet. You have one card slot on either side and then the center slot for cash or more cards. Say it holds four to six pretty comfortably. I've been carrying three plus cash with uh, a little bit of room to spare. So I would say four, maybe five would be a pretty good sweet spot for this. It barely weighs an ounce. It's super thin. The construction on this looks so great. All of the stitching is pristine. Uh, overall, there's just such a level of quality with a couple of Pioneer products I've tried recently. Uh, I've been really happy with this. They have a few different other wallet options if you don't like something really, really simple like this, but I am just such a huge fan of this 3XD fabric. Uh, definitely going to be checking out some more stuff from them in the future. This has been really great so far. Got a new pen I've been checking out the last month or two. This is the Refine EP1. I've been getting more and more into pens lately as I check out new ones for the channel. I've been taking a lot more like regular physical notes lately as well. The EP1 is a four and a half inch pen, so it's going to be pretty small and short. You know, I don't think it's short enough to disrupt how I would normally write. Just makes it a little bit more compact for an everyday carry. I did check on their site they have a longer version as well this one is a black coated stainless steel i believe they have a titanium and maybe a copper one as well um, i've been really impressed with the overall quality especially considering uh, this thing's only 45 dollars you know a lot of the pens i've checked out you know, I'm blessed enough to get a lot of review samples and things, and sometimes they can get, you know, upwards of 100 to $200. For $45, I think the quality on this thing is excellent. Not too much else to say with this. It uses a copper bolt action piston in the center. Uh, it does have a little optional stand if you want to keep it at your desk, which is a cool touch. I checked out the stand as well. Uh, really good quality, good weight to it. Overall, I'm really impressed. Bolt action pens have been really fun to dive into over the past couple of years. For headphones, I've got the classic, uh, the AirPods Pro Gen 2. I'm usually diving between a few different options that I'm reviewing and checking out for the channel, using for different things like audio mixing and stuff like that, but uh, these are definitely my most used daily. 
talked about them plenty. Everyone knows about AirPods, so I'm just going to kind of skip over some of that stuff. But I do have a new case that I've been checking out for the last bit from Kadabi. This is their Mezzo case. Kadabi was actually nice enough to sponsor this week's video as well, so a huge thanks to them. Uh, in addition to the Mezzo case, they actually sent me out a couple of phone cases to check out as well. You all know I'm not a huge phone case guy, but I get a lot of questions about them and a lot of requests for recommendations and things. I've been checking out a few different ones over the past few months. Uh, Kadabi had reached out and they looked really great. Uh, they have a really strong focus with their brand ethos around minimalism, both in their design languages as well as the functionality. Just simple and high quality and intentional with their products. It's definitely a vibe I can get behind. I've actually been using and checking out their sheath case for a little while now, and now I'm not sure if I'm a full case convert after being caseless for so long, but the quality and everything about this thing is really great. Their sheath case and the mezzo case for the AirPods are kind Kind of sibling cases because they use the same materials. It's a proprietary polymer called shock light that they use. It's drop tested up to two meters or 6.6 .6 feet. The overall feel and look and texture of this is what really drew me in. Uh, there's a really great grippiness to this material. Uh, looks really nice. The finishings and everything are really nice. Just super simple. No gaudy logos on any of their products, which is just so great to see. Uh, the sheath case is just really thin and pretty minimal. The buttons still feel really great honestly even a little bit better than naked if I'm being honest after not having a case for so long. The MagSafe on both of these work great as well. You all know I'm a huge fan of the MagSafe products and that's always been a big holdout for a lot of cases for me. Uh, the MagSafe magnets in here are still just as strong and work really well just like if you didn't have a case on. Talking about it for the AirPods case as well, you do have speaker cutouts for the Gen 2 so you can still hear all the sounds and a really nice touch, something that I didn't realize I wanted or needed. Uh, it does sit upright, which is just a nice little fun addition. Uh, overall, just really high quality. I love the minimalist design and aesthetics, the attention to detail and quality. Huge thanks again to Kadabi for sponsoring this week's video. If you want to check out the sheath case or the mezzo case for the AirPods, be sure to check the links in the description below. Uh, really happy I was able to test some of this stuff out and the quality has been great. They've got a few other products on their site as well. Be sure to check those. Uh, let's move into the next item. Got a long time channel classic up next. This is the Jibin key organizer. Um, my quest for the perfect key organizer has seemingly come to a close. Uh, found this a while ago. I know you've all seen it and heard me talk about it before. I'm always on the market to test and check out new ones, you know, as I'm making content for the channel here, but uh, I just have not been able to beat this thing. I did switch back to the all black one though. I felt like it fit the vibe of uh, this loadout. I have the black and brown one. They're both great. The brown has a really great patina because I've used it a little bit more than this one, but the Jimin uses Italian leather. It holds three to nine keys. And aside from just looking really great in the construction and the materials, uh, they use a toolless design, so you don't need to use a screwdriver, a bit driver, or anything to be able to get in and out of this. You know, I'm constantly checking and testing out different key organizers, so I'm moving my keys around a lot for the channel, or if we have a cat sitter come and watch our cat, something like that. Uh, it's really annoying to have to like take something fully apart. This makes it super convenient. Great quality, not overly expensive. I'm still actively on the hunt for new ones to check out, but so far this thing has not been able to get dethroned. If you've been watching recently, you might have already seen this, but this is the Arcfield UV flashlight. Uh, it's a standard flashlight and a UV flashlight combined. I'm using this as my daily for over a month now, and I've been really happy with it. The regular flashlight's a thousand lumens, Plenty bright for my needs. I do like that Nightcore EDC 27 that I had last time. I think that goes up to 2000. A little more flashlight than I need. A thousand has been plenty, but in addition to that, you get a really nice toggle here to be able to switch it into UV mode. You know, UV lights have a ton of benefits, especially if you're traveling or you know, say you work at a place where you got to check legitimacy of bills or cleanliness of different things. I already talked at length about this in another video, so I'm not going to drone on. Uh, it does use a proprietary magnetic charger, which is really nice to use, but you know, always runs into some potential issues with it being proprietary. Overall though, it's been really pleasant to use and I'll probably continue carrying it for a little while at least. Next up on my person, I've got my hat here. I can't remember the exact model name for this hat, but it's from Ampel Create. 
native. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be available anymore, so I'm not sure if I'll have a link for you in the description, but I've been getting a ton of comments lately asking about my hat collection. I'm trying to figure out a way to make a video around that that's interesting for everyone to watch. If you do want to see that or if you have any ideas, be sure to let me know down in the comments. You know, I will say Huckberry, whoever sources their hats, uh, does an amazing job. A large portion of my hat collection has come from them. You know, they tend to go in and out of stock from their shop pretty frequently, which is unfortunate, but I've found some really great options there. So just check Huckberry if you're ever in the market for some like cool and unique hats. I found most of mine there. And then moving on to watches, speaking of Huckberry, uh, still rocking the Timex Flix. I've also been wearing my NASA G-Shock release that came out a couple of months ago, especially playing Starfield lately. I've uh, been having a ton of fun with that, but that one's not available for sale, unfortunately. But this has been my most used daily for months now. It's just a really fun little watch. It's the Timex Iron Man Flix. This is an exact reissue of the 1999 version. So much fun diving into all the digitals. I've got a 44 millimeter case on here, 100 meters of water resistance, all the timers, alarms, stopwatches, all that sort of stuff. Just such a fun classic to add to the collection. Uh, moving into sunglasses, I am still carrying the Huckberry Cruisers. I feel like I accidentally fell into a uh, row of Huckberry products here, not intentional. Uh, the Cruisers are great though. These things are $35 and they're probably the sunglasses I have that look best on my face. And that includes some you know, much more expensive sunglasses. They're polarized. These ones are a tortoise and a, a green tinted lens. Just really great, simple design, uh, just classic. Possibly boring for some of you, but glasses wearers might appreciate this. I found some microfibers that have been consistently great for me. I've had a lot of trouble finding a place to buy microfibers to clean my glasses that don't suck terribly. I have bought and returned so many packs of them. I just kind of gave up. That's why I haven't talked about it on the channel for a while. You know, I had some old ones from years ago that I honestly don't remember where they came from uh, that I've been using and cycling through, but I lost a couple and I was down to like two. And my glasses get dirty constantly and having one of these with me is a must. But these are from Koala. I found them on Amazon. They call it a Japanese microfiber. I tried to look into that and I couldn't find any information. So I don't know what Japanese microfiber means but uh, these have been really, really great. They're nine bucks for a six pack. To pair with the microfiber, I've got my Vala Alta handkerchief. This is another long standing channel favorite of mine. It's a 12 by 12 Irish linen handkerchief. Uh, I've talked about them so much over the past couple of years, I won't dwell on it a ton, but if you're in the market for some good handkerchiefs, these are my favorite hands down. Quick rapid fire here, I've got my nano bag. You all recommended this to me and it has become an indispensable part of my kit. Uh, I always forget to mention this is the standard size. Uh, they have a few different options, but yeah, the standard one is pretty like normal grocery bag size. Now, I'm on foot generally and just need to make sure I carry a bag with me so I can get my groceries home. Also, I always keep an air tag in my sling bag, just a really great way to keep track of it. If you ever misplace your sling bag or it gets stolen, I've actually left mine at a concert before and was able to track it back down with this. Uh, indispensable, inexpensive, just really, really great addition to the setup. For a sling bag, I've been using the Bellroy Light Sling for the past few months, but I just got my hands on the brand new released uh, packed three liter sling. As the name states, it's a three liter sling bag. It uses a recycled nylon fabric. I unfortunately wasn't able to get the exact weight of the fabric, but it definitely feels pretty beefy and substantial. The zippers feel great. You have some solid organization in here. You have a nice magnetic pocket, really similar to the old five liter anywhere sling. I loved having the magnetic pockets in here. It's just a really nice touch. So you have one big pocket, two smaller pockets, and then a zipper mesh pocket on the opposite side. Overall, it's been really nice to use. Uh, three liters is a little tight for my setup though. I tend to prefer, you know, a five to six liter range just so I have some room for error or if I'm picking up something small from the store, I don't have to get out my bag and can just throw it in the sling bag. Uh, really nice though. I like that this has some depth to it. I always like seeing sling bags with a bit of structure. I think it makes things really nice and pleasant to use. Uh, but that is going to wrap it up for the fall 2023 everyday carry update. I really hope you all enjoyed this. I'd love to hear about your setup in the comments down below. Do you have any plans for fall? Um, let me know about it. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.